In the last video, we built the very first template for our agency website. And this first template is called default template. So you can find it inside templates and then default. And it's the, the first template that Kirby needs or the one template that Kirby needs whenever it falls back to having no template for a page. So if there's no custom template, it will always use this. So it's a good starting point for your project. And what we did in the last video is we created an HTML document in this default template. Um, we put in some dynamic content from our site TXT and from um, each individual page. So the site title, um, the page headline, some text from the page. We created um, a header with logo and menu. So um, we use the site children method to load a list of all the pages that we created in our content folder. So you can see them here. We made sure that only the numbered or sorted pages are included in our menu by using the listed method. And um, yeah, we created this small main area here for our main content for the page and a footer with a Twitter link. Quite a simple setup, but a good way to start and to show some of the functionalities of Kirby and how you use simple objects like the site object or the page object to load content from your content folder. And the result looks like this, plain and simple. We loaded the first style sheet in there to make it look a bit more nice. And now we want to move on. So clicking around in our project, we can see that every page basically looks the same. And um, especially for pages like the projects page, we want to break out of this boring default template now and we want to build something more exciting. So for the projects, we probably want to have a grid of projects with images and maybe a title and a category below it. So a typical portfolio page, basically. Um, for the team and the blog, we would also want custom templates. So how do we do that? How would we load additional templates in Kirby or how would we create additional templates in Kirby? Let's take a step back at our content folder and by creating or while creating the content in there, um, I always create um, chose really um, simple and useful text file names, something like projects.txt or team.txt. And I did that um, intentionally because the file names of the text files in the content folder decide what template is being loaded by Kirby. And what Kirby does is it has a look at that file name and then it tries to find a um, template that is called the same same way. So if we go to site templates um, and we copy this and paste it and create a projects.txt uh, .php, Kirby would now load this template for the projects page because it has a projects.txt instead of the default one. So this is a really simple connection between the names of your text files and the names of your templates. And this means that we can easily create custom templates for all our pages by giving them meaningful text file names. The team page could have its own template by using another team.php template or by creating another block dot php template for the blog etc etc so we can have custom templates quickly and easily but we can also share templates so for every project for example in our projects folder we would probably always use the same project.txt file name to make sure that all the projects load the same project.php template so we can share templates like this and this is this is a really cool way to, to load templates, custom templates, and create custom templates for your pages. So let's have a look at our new template. So we created a projects.php template, and now we could go in here, probably somewhere here, and create our grid, right? So if we have a look at the page, this is where the grid would go, and this is in the template where the grid would go. So we would rip out this page text here because there is no text for the projects page and would create a list of projects here. But you probably already saw the problem with this because we have all this code 
up here and also down there, which is completely the same in both templates. And this might not sound like a big deal if you think about just two templates, um, but thinking about more templates for the team, for blog, for contact, um, you easily or far quickly go, go to that point where uh, it doesn't get uh, maintainable anymore. So let's just think about a situation where you need to add an, an additional meta tag or where you need to load an additional CSS file or where you want to manipulate the menu or the HTML for the menu, you suddenly end up with having to make the same changes in multiple files. And you could easily make mistakes by doing this. So you, you miss something or you, you don't make the right changes in all the files and then your, your project gets messed up. So what we really want to make sure is that we don't have so much redundant code and we avoid those mistakes by having too much redu redundant code. So let's take a step back, um, delete this project's PHP before we move on and have another look at the default.php template. So as I said before, this entire upper part of the template, pretty much down here, um, would be very likely be the same in every template that we are going to build from now on. So let's have a look at it in the browser. So basically the entire header with the logo and the menu is very likely to stay the same in every project uh, and every, in every template for our project. And the same, of course, um, applies to the footer. So what we can do in order to um, yeah, avoid this redundancy here is we can take this entire part here we can cut it out of our template. And now we can go to our snippets folder and create our very first snippet. So we make it a PHP file as well and call it header PHP. That seems obvious. And we just paste what we cut before from the default template. So now we have the exact same code in there that we just had in the default.php template and we don't have to change anything. We can leave it untouched like this, save the file, and that's pretty much it. So now we created um, a snippet that we can reuse in multiple templates and that is not redundant anymore. How do we get that back into our default.php? Um, Kirby has a method called snippet. And by using the same name, so header, in our snippet method, we include the code that we just um, put into the header.php back in our default template. So now we have this and we can do the same thing for the footer. So we would uh, cut this out as well and put it into another file, call it footer. And now we, we did the same thing. It's no longer redundant and we can easily include it here as well. And now we have a very clean template to work with and we can focus on the, the center part that needs to change in every other template, um, but the rest stays the same. So the, the advantages of this are pretty obvious if you think about those changes that you would probably need, uh, probably need to make during the project. So you, as I said before, you would very likely add more meta tags here. You would very likely add uh, maybe a JavaScript file or an additional um, CSS file there. Um, maybe you, you in some, at some point you get the, an SVG file for the logo and you no longer have to work with the placeholder. Um, maybe the menu gets more complex. Maybe you add drop-down menus. Um, so instead of having to do all those changes in multiple templates, you can now do that in one file and those changes will propagate in, um, through all templates so you don't have to make them multiple times and the same for the footer so it's especially with something like this um, it's a it's a really cool thing that you can start so easily with just a very tiny placeholder as a footer and then when the footer grows you can you can maintain it here and it will just be available in all the templates let's have a look at the browser version and you can see 
it's all still cool. It's all looking like exactly the same as before. If you have a look at the source code, it's all there. So the, the top part of the document there, the bottom part of the document is there. Nothing really changed, but it got a lot more maintainable for us. This is how you work with snippets. Um, they can do a lot more for you, which we will see in later videos. So you can pass data to snippets. You can even nest them. So for example, at one point, maybe your menu gets so big that you feel like, okay, even within the header snippet, this part is so big that it doesn't get maintainable anymore. And you want to rip this out maybe. So you can do the same thing and cut this, create a new menu snippet, paste it there. And now you can replace this with the menu snippet loader. And then you have a nested snippet. So you can nest them indefinitely and um, reuse them in multiple snippets. So it's a very powerful way to keep your code clean and your templates clean. This is it about snippets. They are super useful. Use them wherever you think it makes sense for you to clean up your code um, and see you in the next video. Thank you. Bye bye.